Prime Minister Narendra Modi's seventh visit to the United Arab Emirates. And in Abu Dhabi, at Ahlan Modi event, the Prime Minister emphasized that this was a visit, his first visit in 2015 was after a gap of over three decades. Such an important part of the world for India. The largest Indian diaspora, 3.5 million strong, live and work in the United Arab Emirates. But this is a relationship that's extremely crucial. Energy security, economy, trade. Now, from space to ocean, this relationship is being taken forward. Prime Minister Narendra Modi scripts a new chapter in India-UAE ties. At Elan Modi, chance echoed throughout Abu Dhabi as Prime Minister Narendra Modi held his mega diaspora outreach just a short while back. The Prime Minister reiterated his third term guarantee at the Ahlan Modi stage, listing out all achievements under his government and his pledge for a Vikasit Bharat, a developed India by 2047. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also thanked Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan for the construction of the Hindu temple in Abu Dhabi, which is spread over 27 acres, will be inaugurated tomorrow. As earlier, the Prime Minister was accorded a grand welcome, complete with a guard of honor by the President of UAE. Abu Dhabi, man. आप लोगों ने नया इतिहास रच दिया आप लोग यूएई के कोने कोने से आए और भारत के भी अलग अलग राज्यों से आए हैं लेकिन सबके दिल जुड़े हुए हैं इस ऐतिहासिक स्टेडियम में हर धड़कन कह रही है भारत यूएई दोस्ती जिंदाबाद सांस कह रही है भारत ये दोस्ती जिंदाबाद हर आवाज कह रही है भारत ये आप में से जो लोग बीते दिनों भारत गए वो जानते हैं कि आज भारत में कितनी तेजी से बदलाव आ रहा है आज भारत एक से बढ़कर एक आधुनिक एक्सप्रेस वे बना रहा है आज भारत एक से बढ़कर एक नए एयरपोर्ट बनवा रहा है आज भारत एक से बढ़कर एक नए रेलवे स्टेशन बनवा रहा है आज भारत की पहचान नए आइडिया नए इनोवेशन की वजह से बन रही है आज भारत की पहचान मेगा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट से बन रही है आज भारत की पहचान एक वाइब्रेंट टूरिज्म डेस्टिनेशन के रूप में बन रही है आज भारत की पहचान एक बड़ी स्पोर्ट्स पावर के रूप में बन रही है और आपको सुनकर गर्व होता है जरूर होता होगा होता है ना साथियों आप सभी भारत में आई डिजिटल क्रांति को जानते हैं डिजिटल इंडिया की प्रशंसा पूरी दुनिया में हो रही है इसका लाभ यूएई में बसे आप सभी साथियों के भी हो 
इसके लिए हम प्रयास कर रहे हैं और आप जानते हैं मुझे हर भारतीय के सामर्थ्य पर कितना ज्यादा भरोसा है इसी भरोसे के दम पर मोदी ने एक गारंटी भी दी है मोदी की गारंटी आप जानते हैं मोदी ने अपने तीसरे टर्म में मोदी ने अपने तीसरे टर्म में भारत को तीसरे नंबर की इकोनॉमी बनाने की गारंटी दी है और मोदी की गारंटी यानी गारंटी पूरा होने की गारंटी हमारी सरकार लोगों के जीवन स्तर को सुधारने के लिए उनकी परेशानियां कम करने के लिए लगातार काम कर रही है हमने चार करोड़ से ज्यादा परिवारों को पक्का घर बना कर दिया है हमने 10 करोड़ से ज्यादा परिवारों को नल से जल का कनेक्शन दिया हमने 50 करोड़ से ज्यादा लोगों को बैंकिंग सिस्टम से जोड़ा है हमने 50 करोड़ से ज्यादा लोगों को 5 लाख रुपए तक के मुफ्त इलाज की सुविधा दी है गांव देहात के लोगों को इलाज में दिक्कत ना हो इसके लिए हमने डेढ़ लाख से ज्यादा आयुष्मान आरोग्य मंदिर बनवाए हैं जब साल 2015 में उनके सामने आप सबकी ओर से यहां धाबी में एक मंदिर का प्रस्ताव रखा तो वो तुरंत एक पल भी गवाए बिना उन्होंने हा कह दिया और उन्होंने यहां तक कह दिया जिस जमीन पे तुम लकीर खींच लोगे वो मैं दे दूंगा और अब धाबी में ये भव्य दिव्य मंदिर के लोकार्पण का ऐतिहासिक समय आ गया एंड इंडिया टुडे अक्षता नंद गोपाल नाउ ज्वाइंस मी लाइव फ्रॉम द जायद स्टेडियम इन धाबी अक्षता दर एक्साइटमेंट कैन बी सीन ऑन टीवी बट यू मस्ट हैव फेल्ट इट फर्स्ट हैंड एंड स्पेशली व्हेन प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी स्पोक ऑफ my brother referring uh, to mbz also saying he just said i, I asked for some land for a temple he said jo zameen chahiye le lo and 27 acres of land was given give us give us a response um, and a sense of what's the buzz like on ground Good evening Gaurav and yes you're right this event of Elon Modi uh, was a huge huge crowd plus 35000 people who gathered here to represent the 3.5 million strong Indian diaspora present here in UAE and the loudest cheers were reserved for the moments when the prime minister spoke about his bon homie with Mohammed bin Zayed with his highness uh, and of course about how he felt when he first stepped foot in 2015 saying i didn't know much of diplomacy and yet i had such a warm welcome from them 
then the crown prince and his entire family, and then to now, when again you had His Highness Mohammed bin Zayed visiting him, attending to him at the airport, welcoming him personally, and of course that guard of honor. So the loudest cheers were for that moment. But Gaurav, there was also a very important message of togetherness that the Prime Minister gave to the Indian diaspora here, saying very clearly that Bharat is proud of you, and also of course asking all of them to chant with him, Hamara Bharat. It gave a sense of togetherness, is my sense really, when I spoke to so many of them there who said they feel so proud to be sitting here in UAE and celebrating India, celebrating. Indian culture and tradition and that's exactly what we're going to be seeing come tomorrow as well when the BAPS Hindu Mandir is unveiled by the Prime Minister. It's not just a Hindu temple, it's the coming together of cultures, it's the celebration of different cultures of harmony as well. So that's exactly what is being celebrated and perhaps the biggest testament, Gaurav, to the growing India-UAE ties. Oh, absolutely. And this is the relationship as the Prime Minister also spoke extensively. It's not just about the 3.5 million diaspora uh, being, being the only glue, but at every level from energy to economy, from strategy to space, this is the relationship that, that spreads across. Akshita, stay with me. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's seventh visit to the UAE in nine years and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, he's been to India four times in this period. The first and the largest Indian temple that's coming up in the region. What does this mean for bilateral ties and what's the global messaging here? Joining me on this India First special broadcast is Ambassador Veena Sikri. Uh, Dr. Alvait Singh Ningthau Jam is an assistant professor at the Symbiosis School of International Studies, joins us on this broadcast, as does Dr. Vail Awad, a very senior international journalist and a political analyst, joins us on this show. Ambassador Sikri, the Prime Minister spoke of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed coming to the airport to receive him with all his brothers when the Prime Minister visited the first time in 2015, the first Indian Prime Minister to do so in 30 years. And the fact that he came once again in 2024, what, does, what do you make of the India-UAE relationship, madam? I think it's a huge, uh, geo it's of huge geopolitical significance. I think Prime Minister Modi, when he became Prime Minister in 2014, recognized the importance of the Gulf for many reasons. First of all, of course, there is a huge Indian diaspora among the largest Indian diaspora in the world living here. And Prime Minister Modi, as you know, always considers the diaspora as an important bridge, a bridge of friendship and understanding, especially because the diaspora is doing so well in every country where they are living. So he gave a lot of importance and his first visit, as you said, was after more than three decades. So it was welcomed by the uh, by the, 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 the then Emir of, uh, of UAE and he was welcomed with open arms. But it didn't remain at that. The program that was made, the vision that was brought into the strategic partnership that was developed, the comprehensive economic partnership that was developed. So that was all giving uh, substance. To the friendship. It was not just one visit and then left at that. It is now the seventh visit. But in that time, look what has been built up. And yes. look at the trade. UAE is now one of the largest investors in India, 11 billion dollars of investment and they have done only two billion dollars of investment in China so it shows you know how much it is of importance and okay. I think the inauguration of the Swaminarayan temple tomorrow is of huge significance as a message Sarva Dharma Sambhav that is all religions are possible I think it's the message which in the leaders of India and UA want to give to their own people let me take this, this to Dr. Awad Dr. Awad what makes the India UA relationship so special, so strong. What's the appreciation in West Asia, sir? Thank you, Gaurav. I think it is the personal touch of the pragmatism and realism on the Indian foreign policy have seen during the uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, tenure that we have seen this sort of development in the relation with all the GCC countries taking apart uh, the UAE, which has a special cordial relation because of the personal relation between the two top leaders. And I think that's a message that the Prime Minister is being able to convey not only to the Indian diaspora, which there are around 8 million are stating, staying in the Gulf country, but also to the rest of the Indian diaspora, that it is matter every Indian for the, uh, the Prime Minister matter. So this kind of fostering relation with the UAE, and it's a multifaceted relation, Gaurav, it is economical, it is a, a cultural, 
it is a social, it is a political, it has all the faces of it. And I think it is uh, with the times to come, it, this cultural dimension, it will continue to grow stronger with the time. Okay. Dr. Ningthang Jam, Prime Minister repeatedly referred to MBZ as my brother. We have 3.5 million Indians living and working in the UAE. How do you view the comprehensive strategic partnership and its impact? And this personal equation between the Prime Minister and MBZ. Thank you, Gaurav, for having me on the show this night. Uh, now, if we look at the contemporary international world order, there is a great display or a very discernible display of uh, you know, personal diplomacy going on between different uh, leaders in different parts of the world, not only between India and the UAE, but rightly pointed out by, the, uh, by other panelists that there is a great display of personal bond home between the two leadership, and that has played a very important role in bringing together the two countries uh, closer than ever before. If we look at the trajectory of India's foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis West Asia, uh, you know, I think this is considered to be one of the most successful stories uh, the Indian foreign policy has ever had. And in that, if we look at the bilateral ties between India and the UAE, we can put them in the pedestal. Uh, you know, the fact that we have already signed a comprehensive strategic partnership between the two countries also speaks a volume about the coming of or the maturation of the ties between the two countries. No longer the relations are determined by the, uh, the volume of the oil and the energy trade or the imports that we get from these countries. But also, uh, we have added many dimensions to the relationship and what we have seen uh, and what we have heard in the Prime Minister's speech just a while back speaks a lot about the, the transformation in the relationship. So he okay. has spoken up a lot about the cultural uh, uh, you know, ties between the two countries, which is very important. And at the same time, we are also taking the ties to a further level by increasingly uh, focusing on the educational sector, to me, which is yes. very important. Oh, absolutely. Is... In fact, I'm coming to that in just a moment. IIT Delhi with a campus in Abu Dhabi, Central Board of Secondary Education setting up a base in Abu Dhabi. That's extremely significant. Ambassador Sikri, there appears to be a special bond between the leaders. Prime Minister Narendra Modi specifically referred to his request to Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan for the temple. And he said that I was told you just put your finger on the map and that area is yours. This would indicate some very special relationship. This, this in your appreciation, ma'am, what message does this send to the region and perhaps across the world? Uh, you know, I think the bonding is very important. Uh, the bonding takes place, A, you have a personal rapport, you know the person can be your friend, but the bonding also comes from sharing of ideas, from a shared vision. And I think that uh, both uh, Prime Minister Modi and uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, they had this vision of what message they want to give their people, that we are, we may be different, we have different nationalities, we have different religions, but our values are the same and all religions have the same message of brotherhood and friendship and the beautiful temple that will be inaugurated tomorrow is a big symbol of this you know it, it's incredible that you should have had such a beautiful beautifully carved uh, temple reflecting the millennia old civilizational relationship between the gulf and india gulf region and india this is another important message that in the 21st century we are renewing something which was there millennia ago where oh, you know absolutely. arab daos would come to india for trade and so on and it's the indian middle east corridor project is really a revival of that traditional relationship so whether it is religion civilizational values trade economic cooperation we want our people to have the same mindset believing in sarva dharma sambhav believing that the whole world is one family and really implementing that belief uh, through these trade messages. You know, UAE is looking very much beyond uh, the fossil fuel era of the world and they're looking at a post-fossil fuel era and they think India is a very good place for investing. The people of India, there are, you know, close to 4 million uh, Indians living in the UAE and they're valued there. They're valued, for their, they're valued for their contribution, their sincerity, their work ethic and all this is reflected uh, okay. in, in, in the bond that has developed between, uh, uh, you know, You Shikh know, you Mahmoud refer to Zayed that ancient, ancient, ancient uh, uh, trade between India, uh, between Bharat, uh, and and I believe Port Port Rashid uh, was where in, Indians would go uh, and get pearls from there. Pearls, yes. uh, we are yes. told, the trade was immense uh, from from time immemorial. Doctor Awad, yes. 
85 billion dollars bilateral trade india is ua's second largest trading partner the second largest export destination uae is also the fourth largest fourth largest source of fdi in bharat and you know ambassador sikri just referred uh, to india middle east europe economic corridor how will that be a game changer and civilizational trade relationship in the 21st century sir i think we are taking in consideration the old civilization and the link between india and the arab world in in the contemporary history gorov makes it very interesting to see this relation fostering if you remember in 18 of february 2022 it was the first comprehensive economic partnership yes. that uae have signed outside with india and that partnership also bring an investment of 100 billion dollars of investment from uae into india generating more to than 200,000 jobs and there are more than 83,000 indian companies are uh, active in in uae and 3.5 million indian as you said so all this uh, shows that the importance of this relation let us remember also the food security which is also the corridor they are trying to create between india and uae it's of a prime importance for the region and for feeding hungry uh, public in this part of the world uh, which will be very beneficial and mutual uh, for the, the 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 two nations all this comes in the end between Uh, the uh, global geopolitical dimension and the dynamic changes which is unpredictable that have thought those leaders that there should be another economic corridor which they call it the IMAC yes. and that IMAC need a, a stability and security in the Middle East where it can really uh, be uh, visible and economically viable and that is why you need to uh, build up the infrastructure for this such of a project to compete with other project in the region and to ensure that india will remain a, a strong a partner and strongly bonded with the arab nation and that is why india kept its relation and respect to the arab world at equal distance from all the disturbances uh, with the uh, neighboring and the rift between the arab nation and i think that is where the vision of the leader play a major role in seeing this relation grow faster it's so interesting you should mention that uh, and dr ningtham jam uh, you know we we live in very interesting times times in memorial india was known as the sone ki chidiya uh, that was the kind of wealth india had and a strategic power which will have that kind of wealth in times to come uae is also key to india's energy security energy cooperation so uae is india's third largest third largest crude oil supplier second largest lng and lpg source for india so this is a relationship in times to come you see it very strong in the past 9 years but do you also see as a win win for both india and not just the uae but india and this entire region sir exactly gorab this there has been a very great convergence of interest between the two countries and as much as we are building this partnerships we will be able to you know extend the kind of a help we wish to uh, to other parts of the uh, region so we already have done that india and the uae already has partnerships in ethiopia in the setting up of a ict campus so that in itself speaks a volume about the uh, you know the uh, the the other side of the uh, the, the relationship uh, coming to your energy question uh, west asia or uh, uae or for that matter any of the suppliers will continue to remain india's uh, you know biggest suppliers in terms of energy and oil but at the same time there is also a strong desire from both the leaderships to you know to cooperate in the renewable energy sector hmm. uh, you know there is also a kind of an outlook towards a sustainable development and india and the uae also in partnership with countries like israel have already started cooperating in the renewable energy sector and that is going to be one promising uh, and a potential area of cooperation in the times to come and we are also expanding the cooperation with defense and security sector Uh, 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 as much as we are looking for uh, partners in the defense industrial uh, cooperation, the UAE is also looking for similar partnerships, and we have had some, uh, you know, uh, positive developments in the last few months and a year uh, with regard to co-production. And also, India is looking for a market for some of our uh, uh, defense exports, and UAE already has uh, purchased uh, some of our uh, arms and ammunitions, which also uh, is a reason that. Uh, it is also a, an area which we'll see further growth in the times to come so if we look at or if we have to make a prognosis of the relationship i see it as a very uh, very potential uh, future 
And the fact that the Prime Minister has touched upon various achievements made by India in the last few years in terms of infrastructure, in terms of tourism, in terms of space, mm -hmm. that also in a way gives a signal to the UAE leadership that you have a market and you have a partner to invest with. And a, uh, and a stable and a stable economy, a stable growing economy course. that he promises will become the third largest economy in his third term, as he put yes. it. But Ambassador yes. Sikri, how did this turnaround come? So confident is India of this relationship that the first India UAE investment summit was organized in Srinagar in March 2023. That's a big, big, big signal that goes out to a troublesome neighbor to India's west and yeah. perhaps the entire Islamic world. This relationship is truly a game changer, madam. Uh, no, absolutely. You know, it is. Um, this is the biggest change in the vision of Prime Minister Modi looking at this region and recognizing the crucial importance of this region to changing India's image even around the world. Now, all these decades, it's been Pakistan who's been carrying the narrative to the rest of the world and talking against India on Kashmir and talking to the OIC um, against India on Kashmir and getting resolutions issued right, left and center. But now India is carrying its own message. There is no longer, we are not bothered about the message by any other country. We have forgotten about any kind of hyphenation. We are carrying our own message. We are building our own relationships. And these countries have understood it. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed has understood. He has appreciated the value of what India is saying. He has realized that what Pakistan has been saying all these decades has no relevance yeah. to what is the situation on the ground, to what the people of India want, to what the people of Jammu and Kashmir as an integral part of India want. And this message, conveying it with such sincerity of purpose, inviting their people. The, the First, the businessmen came from UAE to visit India. They visited JNK. They visited all other parts of India. And they have made their choices where they want to invest. They are in the Gujarat summit. You know, they are in other um, state summits. And they visit all of this and they decided. And they wanted to open a mall and other things in, in, in uh, Srinagar. And it's happened. And this is it. This is the reality of bringing into fruition a promise, a dream, a vision. And oh, the, the time between having that vision and bringing it into fruition, this is what has happened in the uh, last nine years. And today you're seeing the result. The temple India, is being UAE inaugurated. The investment summit India. being organized in Srinagar. What an important step uh, and message that was to the entire world. Dr. Awad, India, UAE, India, Saudi Arabia, India, Qatar. The prime minister is also traveling to Qatar uh, tomorrow. What is your assessment, sir, of India's engagement, of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government's engagement with, with this entire region, with West Asia, sir? Well, I think it has been growing faster. And if you notice the Indian foreign policy, in fact, for the last two decades, and in the last decade, it has been growing internationally, been recognized and also looked globally. And in most of the country, in the Gulf region, uh, uh, Gaurav, they have already made up their mind that the acting East policy where India is the destination for investment, India is the destination for the future because it is also part of an uh, ancient century. So therefore, the whole investment and the looking East policy has been the prime priority for most of the Arab countries. And I think the uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, have recognized even Qatar have been selling the Indian gas lesser than Bangladesh and China. Yes. And in fact, they have signed an agreement with the India for 2047, which is going to provide India uh, oil secu energy security, which is a, a, also important. So if the prime minister knows where the basket has to be hunted and where he can take the eggs from, I think he understood the importance of this region for India in the terms of food security, energy security and a diaspora security as well. And analysts argue that this has saved billions of dollars for India, that, that contract for LNG uh, with Qatar. But uh, Dr. Ninthanjam, the, the point that you raised, sir, IIT Delhi with an Abu Dhabi campus, Central Board of Secondary Education opening an office in Abu Dhabi. Um, here the messaging goes way beyond economy, energy security, strategy. Now with this temple and education, you're, you're in the field of culture and education. Was it always so intense or in your appreciation, is this a post-2014-15 transformation, sir? 
See, uh, Gaurav, while we have a little bit of uh, cultural interactions between India and the West Asian countries, uh, but the visibility of this nature was something missing. Uh, for the longest time, one of the missing links in the Indian relation, in, in India's relations with the West Asian countries was the political dynamics, which the current Prime Minister has filled up since 2014. Uh, we already, I've seen your channels discussing about the pre-visit uh, to, the, to, to the Middle Eastern countries uh, several times. We always have that discussions about when was the last time the Prime Minister had visited a country in West Asia. So we have seen that you know, on the rise since 2014, and that has given some sort of a fillip to the missing link that was the political ties. So no matter how much you know, economic relationship or the defense partnerships you have with any country, unless and until you have the political dynamics, I think the, uh, the, the, the real potentials of the bilaterals could not be uh, actualized and, and materialized. So we have seen that uh, being given by the current uh, political dispensation in New Delhi. And to me, uh, adding that element of uh, culture and education is very important because uh, no matter how, uh, how much we talk about the civilizational ties between India and the West Asian countries, there are, uh, if you look at the ground reality, there are a little bit of a lack of understanding about the India's culture and tradition yes. and heritage. So if we have this sort of an initiative being taken up by the government to uh, you know, to, to give a kind of a trust to the educational sector, I'm sure a lot more awareness will be created about what India is and the civilizational and the heritage, uh, uh, the values of the country. So it also adds, you know, fits in well uh, to the, the new education policy of India, where we talk about internationalization of the Indian education system. So UAE, of course, uh, uh, is one of the, uh, uh, you know, the right places for us to start in that direction. So I, I, I really feel that this is a very important move okay. made by the Indian government, particularly in these countries where with whom we are uh, enhancing our, uh, our cooperation. Okay. Okay. A, a very enlightening discussion, uh, Dr. Awad, Ambassador Sikri and Dr. Nintam Jom for joining me here on this India Today special. Many thanks. So those 3.5 million Indians who live and work in the UAE, they're a very crucial bridge between the two countries and the two people. The diaspora in the United Arab Emirates is the largest Indian diaspora anywhere in the world. They are the ones who are taking the civilizational relationship to a new level. Ancient India had trade ties with this region. How is that relationship now being taken forward? Sanjay Sudhir, Ambassador Sanjay Sudhir is India's ambassador to the UAE. India Today's Akshita Nand Gopal spoke to him in Abu Dhabi. Let's listen in. And joining us here on India Today for a very special conversation is Ambassador Sanjay Sudhir here in Abu Dhabi. Good morning. Thank you very much for having us here, Ambassador. Uh, the Prime Minister's visit, seventh one, to the UAE, to the United Arab Emirates. To you, Ambassador, to kick off this conversation, can you give us a sense of really what makes this visit special compared to the previous ones? Well, it's a very special visit. As you said, it's the seventh visit in the last 10 years for Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. And it's, in this duration, uh, the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, has visited India four times. Every time Prime Minister visits, the relationship goes up uh, several notches up. Mm -hmm. If you recall, in 2017, we signed the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Agreement. And things have been flowing out of that. And today, our relationship is really deep. And why? It, is, it covers not only the old areas of trade and investment, but we are into fintech now, into education, infrastructure, and so many other things. Mm. What is going to be, uh, you know, a big talking point from the bilateral deal, Recon, sir? Because there is, yes, a lot of talk about the mandir, about the Indian diaspora, and we'll get to that. But the bilateral itself, in terms of tangible takeaways, what's that going to be? Because I hear there's also some talk of uh, a bilateral investment, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, takeaway that we could see a deal on that front. Well, for full details, I think you will have to, you will have to wait a bit. But uh, certainly, we are going to sign the bilateral investment treaty. Mm -hmm. So, within two years of signing SIPA, we are signing an investment treaty. You is already the fourth largest investor last year and the overall seventh largest investor in India. Mm -hmm. And I think the BIT will take uh, their investment to a different plane altogether. Today, you is the only country with which we have both a SIPA as well as a BIT. Mm -hmm. But in addition to these things, you will also see several uh, documents being signed uh, in connection with infrastructure, fintech, 
and so many other areas. Just just wait and wait and see what all is there uh, to come out of the visit. But uh, one thing I mentioned is that every time uh, Prime Minister visits, relationship goes up higher. So when he was here, say in July last year, there were three agreements signed. Uh, one on IIT Delhi campus in Abu Dhabi. Today that's a reality. Yeah. But the first batch has already started. Which way he's going to visit I hear. Let's see. Uh, the other one was regarding connecting our messaging systems. That's also, uh, you, you might see a follow-up on that. Uh, just give it a few hours. Uh, the third one was on an agreement on settling trade in local currencies. That's up and running. We've already done transactions in crude, gold, food, and so many other areas. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for joining us here. Thank, Thank you very much. Today. Thank you. And on day two of his very crucial UAE visit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate the Hindu temple in Abu Dhabi. Now, this is spread over 27 acres of land. Construction started in 2018 and completed by 2024. India Today's Akshita Nanda Gopal is on ground zero and she gets us this report. I'm standing in front of the largest Hindu temple outside of India. And it's in the United Arab Emirates in Abu Dhabi. This is the beautiful Bab Swami Narayan temple, which the Prime Minister will be inaugurating on 14th February. So excitement, of course, is in the air, but it's a beautiful, beautiful architecture also that brought this temple alive. Uh, all of it, all of it made by hand and interestingly made of marble as well as sandstone as you can see here uh, and the carvings are absolutely beautiful to witness uh, you can see the preps are still underway here there's a lot of work that's underway which is why they put the glasses also right at the entrance right inside we're trying to show you there you can see that there are two idols placed covered with a white blanket that will be opened up when the prime minister reaches but you can see inside beautifully adorned in gold and that tells you the kind of work that's gone into the this particular temple as well but besides that why is this temple so significant we've told you of course that because it's in Abu Dhabi it's something that's now a cultural awakening of sorts showing India's might across the world but in this temple 27 acres is in fact covered in this entire area uh, it's huge massive and I can show you across which we will do in just a bit as well there are seven idols also in here uh, and uh, the idea is to ensure that every part of in fact the country of India is covered so you have uh, Murtis you have Lord Ram you have Sitama's idol inside you have Lord Shiv inside you have Lord Ayyappan an idol of Tirupati Balaji all of that inside this very temple it has a capacity of about 3,000 people who can be in fact held at one point in this area who can come here and offer their prayers but let me tell you about some of the features of this temple I have with me Hinal also who works here who's been a volunteer working very actively on ensuring that this dream of a temple comes true and is realized Hinal yeah. I'm sure this is a pinch me moment for you <laughs> yeah. what's it been like you know bringing this story alive I look at the carvings and just look at this here can I just highlight this part right here that shows what really uh, this temple in Abu Dhabi is about. You see sheikhs there. You see, of course, the brahmacharis there all shaking hands. And uh, the story of, you know, everyone coming together to build this temple is absolutely beautiful. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so it's really been an amazing um, journey of infusing people from all cultures, all backgrounds, all religions, because that's what this Monday represents. It's a place for everyone to find peace, to, to find harmony, to come together as communities and realize fundamentally we all share the same underlying values as, as humans. And that's what we want to spread. That's what we want to share. Um, there are also Aztec carvings here, you know, talking about... Yeah, what's, what's the significance of that? I understand that several civilizations also have kind of been weaved into this. Exactly. And it's really, again, to show in every part of this Monday how it's about multiple communities and cultures. And we can...